everyone. So I'll be presenting my project, Mindscape VR, promoting brain health through virtual reality. And I'll be giving an overview of the design, prototype, and the impacts that I learned along the way. Uh, all right, so my point is talk about the overall goal, um, which was to create an XR experience that motivates users to adopt healthy lifestyles to reduce the risk of cognitive decline. The target audience was young adults who are unaware or unmotivated in improving long-term cognitive health. And the impact that I wanted to have is an increase in awareness and fat on foster corrective behavior and brain health. I told just a bit about the literature. Uh, my main motivation was to type 2 Alzheimer's, which affects over 65 million people globally. Um, and the thing about Alzheimer's is that preventative action can significantly reduce the risk of cognitive decline. So things like physical activity, diet, sleep, uh, and social engagement can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's by up to 60%. Um, but the thing about preventative health is that individuals often struggle to adopt and sustain healthy lifestyle changes due to bar barriers like low perceived risk, lack of motivation, and a lim limited understanding of long-term impacts. And the problem with traditional education is that they often fail to create the emotional resonance needed to provide meaningful behavioral change. And the World Health Organization says that in order to have this change, you must not only inform, but also emotionally engage individuals. And so that's where virtual reality comes in as an innovative and emotional way to bridge the gap between awareness and action. And so some of the research and design that went into the development, um, we used an iterative design uh, approach where we kind of built something, uh, got evaluated, got some feedback, and then integrated that feedback. Uh, one problem I had was it became too circular in the sense in that I would have an idea, present feedback, and then incorporate the feedback, and then get more feedback, get more like more feedback, and then go back to the idea I originally had. So I was like going in a circle, but I wasn't kind of improving upon the ideas. I was going in kind of circles. Um, so I'll talk about how I, I fixed that uh, eventually. But just to give an example of what I mean is. Um, these were some of the initial iterations, if you remember, originally I wanted to connect the EEG device to the users as they're uh, in the VR experience and to just essentially have a display of that EEG data. Um, then I thought about having it a bit more interactive where they're inside a forest and they, the brain is still there and they're interacting with the brain in some way. Um, we're talking in the forest. And I would kind of go back and forth. Um, sometimes I wanted them to be in the forest, I get feedback and I change it to they be inside a brain then I go back to the forest, and I realized I kind of wasn't going anywhere after a bit, so then I, I thought about what I should do, because uh, none of these ideas felt like you know the one idea that I wanted to go with. So I decided to revisit the transformative experience framework, and I thought about three different stages. Obviously first the perceptual experience, and I thought, all right, so from my ideas that I do have, what's important to have this perceptual experience? So I went back and I thought about the, the ideas or the characteristics of these ideas and what I actually wanted to have in my project. First was the idea of connection between the brain um, and the user. And then also I thought that the idea of the forest was more impactful. So that's something else that I wanted to take uh, from my initial ideas. Uh, so yeah, the connection and I wanted that forest in it. So that's why I scrapped like the EEG where it would be a little placebo human interaction idea, I didn't think it was as powerful or, or necessary, I suppose. Uh, and then for the cognitive shift and the behavioral change, I thought about what, again, what is important for this. Uh, I wasn't sure exactly how to have those. Uh, so then I started thinking about the narration. Initially, my thoughts on narration was that they were kind of an ineffective alternative to like interaction, uh, just because they seem, in my mind, they seem like a cheap way to do what you wanted to do. And then certain things, like for example, Nancy's demonstration that you did in, in lab one time. Um, and also, I just tried playing around with narration a bit where I generate some audio, put it into my experience, and it just worked really well. And that's how I realized that narration is actually a powerful, immersive tool for conveying people towards ideas. And so I decided to hone in on having that narrative um, aspect. And so, just for a prototype, I won't 
that's what is happening, but I'll show a few different segments of it. So this is how it starts. Welcome to the forest of the mind. Place you'd also be able to move around. And the very much like this. Here, these trees, every tree, and the soil beneath your feet reflect the health and vitality. And then the transitions of every tree. Now imagine. story of the last triangle tree. You come. You come to hear me. It's been so long since anyone has shared my company. I was once strong. My roots ran deep and my branches, oh, they reached for the sky. But life Life needed more from me. The little ones, they called to me in the night over and over. They needed care, and so I stood through the dark, through the storms. Yeah, so that was the, the experience that I ended up creating. And then, so for testing and finding, uh, I practiced that uh, in the VR showcase where I got that as well, a subject. Um, and then the data went through semi structured interviews after the experience. I also recorded the audio so that I can like the master. And there's also a post experience survey that I gave with all the Google Forms as for additional feedback. Just some examples of some of the questions that were asked and then describe a specific moment or interaction and experience that you found particularly meaningful or impactful. Why did this resonate with you? How did the transition from the healthy forest to the decayed forest make you feel? Did the experience inspire you to reflect on your own lifestyle choices and their impact on brain health? Why or why not? And from the transcripts that I got from that, I did some thematic analysis where I got some reoccurring themes um, and extracted the quotes. Uh, one of those themes was emotional cognitive impact. For example, this is a quote from one subject or participant. The end is seeing the trees that are broken down with the one large tree remaining. What an impactful moment for the message of the experience hit home. And so from this, I extracted a key moments for the transition to the decay forest. And then that final tree was one tree standing. Those were the key moments that stood, stood out to the participants. So several participants mentioned that these elements left them with a sense of motivation to reflect on their own habits. But at the same time, there were some things we didn't take into account, so we didn't consider external factors and how they contribute to mental impact. So one participant said that I felt it emotionally, but I think the time of day made it hard to feel that much. Maybe had a second sense in the morning or well rested would provide a better response. So that's something that I hadn't really like considered the time of day or any other external factors. Another thing was the effectiveness of the message. So this is from one participant where they said, I feel like there's a bit of that feeling of like loss in a way because they're kind of like, like the end part resonates where it's like, oh no, there's all these things I could have done. So again, this was, I think, important to the narration, which when that was coupled with the visual transition from lush greenery to a barren landscape, it was identified the problem method of delivering the message. Um, but at the same time, not everybody felt that way. So one participant said, it did make me reflect but it wasn't impactful because I'm a healthy person already and I prioritize what my healthy 
way. So different versions present different alliances to, to help. Uh, so again, from that, I extracted that the participants who are already health conscious, they reported the message had limited personal impact. And so it might call for the need for more tailored experiences depending on who your audience is. And then in terms of user experience and interactivity, some people call for more interaction. So I would prefer to see them interact with the forest more, for example, such as creepy and stories. Um, so yeah, adding interactive elements and deeper engagement and for participants with a more active role in the experience. Uh, one thing I didn't include though is that some participants also felt the other way where they said more interaction isn't necessary. In fact, it could detract from the experience uh, just because it might take away focus from the narration. So again, I think it, it falls back to the previous one where depending on the audience, you might want different experiences because you can't really have like one, one size fits all approach. All right, in terms of reflection and learning, uh, so my overall thoughts was that I feel like I was relatively successful in that I designed the VR experience to the relevant frameworks and theories. I ran a, a small study, but quite take initial user feedback, and I analyzed the tech and data to gather some insights. In terms of the skills developed, uh, user-centric design was my first time kind of designing something like this, or just testing, which I've done like in a programming um, situation, but not anything like this. And then incorporating feedback was, was super helpful. Also integrating theory into practical design. My approach has always been to just start working on something and then kind of fit it to the theory afterwards. So in this case, having that theory first, which again, I started that way initially, but then I switched to having that theory first. Um, yeah, that was, that was a good skill to develop. And in terms of main takeaways, first off, is that complexity is not a requirement for inducing emotion. Uh, and in fact, it can hinder it. So I had these kind of elaborate ideas in the beginning, like the AED uh, device and all that, because I thought that would just make the experience better. But then when I thought about what you actually need for having that emotional impact, it was relatively simple. Like you don't need anything too complicated. I think things that you do have, make sure they're done in like a strategic way, but you don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then effective XR design requires balancing narrative, emotional resonance, and usability. That's one thing I didn't touch on much in the presentation was the idea of motion sickness. Uh, that's all things that you need to consider um, and consider it like as you're building the project as well, um, just because it's as important that the user can actually use whatever it is that you develop. And then this again, take time to brainstorm because uh, I think brainstorming is super important. But for me, I think it's important to start eventually just to have that base application experience that you can then build off of. Because if I just stayed in the brainstorming phase, I would just stay there forever. Uh, and it wasn't until I actually had something like Unity that I actually made a lot more progress. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you stop brainstorming and just start like developing. I think it essentially makes it all together. So as you develop, 